axles anymore. Mm. Made them out of a nine inch by using about a 316 washer. Mm -hmm. This distance from that shoulder to there is, is extra, is very long compared to any other axle. What did you do? Just machine there and there? Mm -hmm. well, did you machine straight. any of that? Nah. I don't want to machine that for. I've got it run, run out about 10 foul there, but here it was only 16. I'll get it out of this gun. Okay. Um, I'll get the 7 sixteenths uh, on that. With axles, when they get bent, you put them in between centers over there, put a clock on there, spin them in between centers, mark it with a piece of chalk where it's the high spot, put them in the press, press it, keep doing that until you get it within a couple of thou. And then if that's still running out of square, the face there, you put in the lathe and just face it. So it squares that up. So it's all running true. And that's how you fix a bent axle. No. Oh. So the stud uh, threads are a bit fucked, are they? You got a thread file. This is how you fix fuck threads with a thread file. Get a set, I've got some seven six. You get all different ones, a thread file. There's all different threads there. See UNC twelve, UNC eleven, twenty, twenty two threads per inch. 14 threads, 13 threads, 16, 18. A thread file. This is a 716 nut. You have a jar over there with silver ones. Yeah. Well, that goes on a standard nut. Hey? Mm-hmm. That's trouble. A bit small for wheel studs, these things. Those half-inch forwards are all half-inch. They're holding the 716. Oh, one is this. Yeah. So, I'll just put that one back in there. Put this stud in. Why didn't you stand for that slightly, you know? Mm-hmm. 
get a oh, we'll come back because we that's when in eight forty one forty it's about the forty pounds short of that one but anyway I know someone's messed around we can try that stud on there later anyway we can put the bearing on and, uh, is this a HQ holding axle H G H T um Third an inch stud pattern they call it. Okay. Just do second hand or something. Uh-huh. And I he's got a there's got a bit of rust on the very end of that axle. I don't know what the condition of inside this diff would be. <laughs> anyway, I'll just, um, so that's the seal that goes with that. Mm -hmm. You go and use the other bearing, which is narrower, no O-ring, you put a washer with it. All you're interested in is making up that width. The 207, this is the 507. Mm -hmm. I'll just, uh, as long as the shrink ring fits in there with clearance, that's all you need. The 35 mm axle that. These are the wide rings we made. We made the skinny ones somewhere. We put them uh, here. Yeah. Stop looking, I found them. I found them. Yeah. These ones here. I'm just gonna get rid of that burr. Try that one. See? It's got clearance. So we can put that on. Now we can do a bit of um, checking. Check. Thirty-five mil is, but we can uh, double forty-one forty shrink rings we made. Just over three eight they are. It's three thou over three eight. This one is five thou under six six thou under. Uh, that won't be moving once we put it off. He's right the other side of the city somewhere. This bloke, Keeler, I think he said he's at. Goes on that way, actually. He's got clearance there. That's all you need. So these are 4140 shrink rings, the ones that come with this bearing. They come with the bearing, these shrink rings? This thing here came with the bearing, did it? Yeah, but it's not, it's not, um, I haven't even bothered to measure, I just measure on a rock well test. It's not, it's not 60 tonne tensile, it's probably 40 tonne. So, all we've got to do, the, um, The yeah. ring you use to press on a bearing. That goes that way. The seal faces there. 
Right. See this ring? Use that to press the bearing on with. scar that diameter that the uh, seal runs on, see? put these things on, drive them on, if I get half a warm up. Blown red hot all over. The things ain't have any re much retaining uh, tension in the steel. If you press it on without heating up a shrink ring, it can scar the diamond of the axle. You don't want to have whack it on on this bench, do you? What? I thought you'd want to have it on a solid bench. Okay. You passed me the torch here. Yeah. You want me to whack it on with the pipe? I'll do it all right. I've been for years. Hundreds of years. Nah. Hundreds? You're even, not even 80 yet, Dad. <laughs> you like it. Yeah. <laughs> without anything. <clears throat> See? Heat it up and it just falls on. And then when it cools, it probably won't move now, would it? No. Nah. Bearing up, it makes the grease softer. Hey, that goes like that. I never leak these bastards because they've got double seal, they've got a seal there, a seal here, a seal here. They used to snap halfway along these axles in these HTs. Anyway, we can. Um, Oh, this one. Rip cat. 
PR2178. It doesn't come in that packet. I've got 20 or 30 probably left over there, bought them 30 years ago. <laughs> I'll go and ring this bloke, he's got to come from right down the side of the city. Okay, so that is how you recondition an axle. So just to go over it, you get the axle, put it in between centers. This is in between centers. See this mechanism here? You put the axle in between center there and center there and spin it and put a dial indicator on it. And wherever the high spot is, you mark the axle with the chalk. Then you take the axle, you put it in a press on two bars and press it on the high spot so the axle bends and you keep doing that over and over until it runs straight and it's not bent within one or two thou three thou at the most and then if that face is running out after you've straightened it then you put in the lathe take the studs out, put it in the lathe and face it square, then put the studs back in, put the new bearing on and the retaining ring and it's reconditioned for another 50 years of use. It's only warm. That's how you recondition a differential axle.